In this video, we're going to talk about molecular orbital theory. Simply put, molecular orbital theory is when atomic orbitals combine to form a molecule. An example for hydrogen is shown here. The 1s atomic orbital for one hydrogen is here, and that has one electron. Here's a second 1s atomic orbital with one electron. When they combine, they form the hydrogen H2 molecule, which has two electrons. The two electrons form the bond, which is referred to as a sigma bond. The sigma bond consists of two molecular orbitals, a sigma bonding molecular orbital, which is shown here, and a sigma antibonding molecular orbital, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. In the sigma bonding molecular orbital, the two atomic orbitals shown here are of the same phase. That means that you have constructive interference, and when they mix, you form a nice bonding molecular orbital with a good solid internuclear region. That means that these atomic orbitals are adding together. This next slide shows a little bit better the concept of constructive interference. Since electrons have wave-like properties, we can think of these waves in a rope as a good example of constructive interference with atomic orbitals. In this example, we have one wave here and one wave here, and as they approach each other, they combine and get bigger. Then they continue on in their separate directions. This combining and getting bigger is the constructive interference that we see when atomic orbitals come together to form a sigma molecular bonding orbital. The other type of molecular orbital is a sigma antibonding molecular orbital. You'll see that it's usually represented by this little star here, and so it's often called a sigma star. In this situation, we have atomic orbitals of opposite phases. So you can see that represented by the dark and the light colors coming together. This means that there is, instead of constructive interference, destructive interference. And when these orbitals combine and mix, things don't go well. Essentially, they cancel each other out, and you end up with a nodal plane between these two lobes. If we think about the example with waves, destructive interference is where one wave is up and one wave is down. And as they come together, they cancel each other out. This is destructive interference, and this is what happens when you have atomic orbitals of opposite phases coming together. If you're still confused about constructive and destructive interference, there's a great video here. It's about 30 seconds, and it shows exactly what's happening with this rope, and they run it in slow motion so you can see it happening really well. Here's an example of a molecular orbital energy diagram. This is for sigma bond formation, or H2, or hydrogen. Remember that the two atomic orbitals come together to form the sigma bonding molecular orbital, and the sigma star antibonding molecular orbital. The bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy. You can see energy over here on the y-axis, and here's our bonding molecular orbital, lower, and our antibonding molecular orbital, higher. Remember that our bonding molecular orbital represents constructive interference, where the two atomic orbitals are in the same phase, and the antibonding molecular orbital is deconstructive interference, where those two atomic orbitals are in opposite phase. We consider the bonding molecular orbital to be lower in energy or more stable, so we can say that it's stabilized. The antibonding molecular orbital is higher in energy or less stable. We can also say that it's destabilized. So our two atomic orbitals, each from one hydrogen atom, came together to form two molecular orbitals, bonding and antibonding. Those two electrons are going to fill from lowest energy to highest energy, so we have two electrons here in the lowest energy molecular orbital, and no electrons up here in the higher energy molecular orbital. You'll see these terms here, LUMO and HOMO. LUMO stands for lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, lowest meaning lowest in energy, and unoccupied meaning no electrons. We actually only have one unoccupied molecular orbital, so in this case it's pretty easy to determine the LUMO. HOMO stands for highest occupied molecular orbital, we only have one occupied molecular orbital. That means only one with electrons. So this is very obviously going to be the HOMO. We want electrons only in bonding molecular orbitals. This is a stable situation. If we had more electrons and we started adding electrons to the antibonding molecular orbital over here, this would destabilize our system. So you'll see that systems that do have electrons in antibonding orbitals are very unstable, and in most cases they can't even exist. We'll look at some more complicated molecular orbital diagrams later on in this lecture.